family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And I want to speak with you on the topic, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I was led to teach this teaching this week and just give the most high praise. Just give him worship. Uh, exalt his name for all he has done. So I just want you to follow me in these precepts <clears throat> as we gain knowledge and understanding. It's always my prayer that we continue to learn and grow in the things, in the ways of the most high. But we want to worship the Lord in beauty and hope in the beauty of holiness. In other words, give them praise, give them glory, give them honor. So we're going to go forth with this teaching. Don't plan to be before you very long. Worship the Lord in a beauty of holiness. So we're going to go to Psalms 100, and we're going to start at verse 1. It says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. He is Yahweh. It is he that have made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people in the sheep of his pasture. First Chronicles 16. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing songs unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he have done, his wonders and his judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Even of the covenant which he made with Abraham, and of his oath unto Isaac, and have confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. So family, he just told us in Psalms 89 and 34, he said, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the things that is gone out of my lips. Now he's telling us right here in First Chronicles 16 and 16, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham and of his oath unto Isaac and have confirmed the same to Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. We know Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the land of your inheritance, when ye were few, when ye were but few, even a few, and strangers in it. And when they went from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not my anointing, and do my prophets no harm. Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. 
<clears throat> See, family, if the Most High wanted to, he could have wiped us off the face of this earth long times ago. He have systems that set in place that can easily get this done. He have the waster. He have the destroyer. He have the slayer. He have the spoilers. And he even have spirits that's created for vengeance. And they're sitting on ready upon the earth when the need is. Now we know all these systems in place are people that can get this job done. We even see in the, the additions to Esther where they wanted to do a total genocide and wipe the children of Israel off the face of the earth. We saw even in Psalms 83 where they all consulted together that the name of Israel would be no more in remembrance. So these things could have easily be done if it was the will of the Most High. Even the Most High was going to do it at one point in time, and Moses made a petition to him and plead and beg that he did not do it because it would give the Egyptians a reason to say that they couldn't trust in their God. The Most High was going to create another seed unto Moses. But anyway, he says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed for that reason, because he don't change. We are not consumed. <clears throat> Let's go back to First Chronicles 16. Sing unto the Lord, all the earth, show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. But great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is also, he also is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. So he telling us right here in the scripture, don't take my word for it. I'm just a vessel. He said he also is to be feared above all gods. Who? The most high God of Israel. Yahweh is his name. He said for all the gods of the people are idols. I just want that to stick for a minute. All the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. First Corinthians 12 and 2, ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. So the gods that the Gentiles were serving, you was serving them too. The things that they was worshiping, you was worshiping them too. We all was worshiping them. Romans 1 and 21, because that when they knew God, Yahweh, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed 
forever. Amen. So in other words, they wanted to give you an image to worship. They're going to give you an image of his son and call that image Jesus. They're going to give you an image to plaster upon the face of the whole wide world, especially on the western side of the world. And they're going to tell you that this is his son. You worship him. You honor him. You bow down to him. You call upon his name. Now, we know his name is Yahawashai, translated in the English as Jesus. But he said, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lusts one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves their recompense of their error, which was me. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. See, he had the King James Bible University. We study precepts. If we're not precepting the word, we don't want to hear it. If I'm not precepting the word, you might as well go to another channel because he said precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, hear little and dear little. He told us in Psalms 119 and 104, through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. So precepts is key to understanding the most high's doctrine and gaining his knowledge. But he telling us in verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. But they didn't want to understand his knowledge and follow his instructions and do it the way that he instructed us to do it. <clears throat> they wanted to do it their own way. So God said, go right ahead. You read these scriptures and, and you pray and whatever you come up in your own mind, your own vain imaginations, you feed in the people something that's from your mind. God allowed this to happen because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Scriptures are clear. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, Despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, meaning not having the knowledge of the Most High God of Israel, covenant breakers, don't want to keep the Sabbath, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, idolatry, witchcraft, Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, hearsays, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past. 
this, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now you have plenty of them. They will tell you they got Jesus and they already saved and ready for heaven. They will tell you this. And in their mind, in that reprobated mind, they're already ready for heaven. But we just got through lining out all of these things, covenant breakers, without understanding all of these idolatries, witchcraft, sedition, all of these things, he say they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But in their reprobated mind, they will tell you that they are already saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and ready for heaven. That's what they will tell you. So family, it's very important that we understand the doctrine of the Most High because it's the one doctrine of this Bible and it's the doctrine of life. This word come to give you life so you can have a right to the tree of life. All of that knowledge, all of that wisdom and all of that understanding. Let's keep pushing. Romans 1 and 32, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. See, I'm not talking about the first death. We already know that it's appointed that man must die. We already know this. I'm speaking about the second death over there in Revelation. See, because we know the second death is the lake of fire burning with brimstone. It's nothing but torment, gashing of teeth. This is what the second death is. He said, and they that commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So this is something we got to think about, family. See, we come to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, meaning righteousness. And we know his word is true. His judgments are true. They are righteous. So therefore, we got to show you both sides. Let's keep pushing. Paul continuing to speak here. He said, brethren, my heart's desire in prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. He just got through telling us in Romans 1 that they did not like to retain God knowledge. God in their knowledge. They, did, they didn't want to retain God in their knowledge. They want to have the world knowledge. They want to get commentaries. They want to look at TBN and look at all these different pastors and preachers with all these different doctrines and words and gain their knowledge from them. But they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. He say, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God, meaning Yahweh. See, it's going to be a lot of folks going to be in for a rude awakening. In their mind, they are already fit for the kingdom and ready for heaven. That's what they'll tell you. 
But in that day, he said they're going to be saying, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We healed the sick in your name. We did cast out devils in your name. And he's going to say, who are you? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. See, it's going to be a sad day when we didn't take out the time to follow the instructions was right there in the book. You put all your trust in a man or a woman and you did not like to retain God in your knowledge. You didn't want to precept his word. You didn't want to even learn how to precept. You didn't want to know what a precept was because you was too afraid that it was going to shine light in the midst of your darkness. That it was going to show your knowledge up. That your knowledge didn't mean nothing compared to the knowledge of God. The word of God said his word is like a hammer. It's going to beat up everything that's around it. It's going to beat it flat to the ground. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. In other words, give unto the Lord, O house of Israel. Give unto the Lord, O ye sons of Jacob. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name, Israel. He gave you his name. Give unto the Lord glory due unto his name. How are we going to give it to him, Elder Jenkins? You're going to offer your body. You're going to make sure this temple of yours is clean from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. You're going to offer up your body. He say, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. See, it ain't enough to say you got holiness on the front of your church door or to say with your lips that you preach in holiness. It ain't enough because he already told us these people, they, they uh, worship me with their mouth, with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. So how are we going to worship the Lord in beauty and holiness? Romans 12, 1 and 2. Paul going to tell us, and he not only telling us, he say, I beseech you, therefore, I beseech you. He's trying to get our attention. The same one that everybody want to go run to to tell you to justify with their lack of understanding that the law is done away with. Paul sitting there telling you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. See, this is how we're going to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. He said, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is what is required. So you got some preacher, oh, he wants your tithes and offerings. Bring your stimulus check to offer. Do all of these carnal-minded 
things is what they'll tell you, but the word of God is telling you that ye may present your bodies a living sacrifice. This is what he wants you to offer unto him. It's not concerned about your money. They're lying to you. He said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. Everything belongs to him. Want your money? He want what is his. He gave you his name. He said, give glory unto his name. First Chronicles 17 and 20. Oh Lord, there is none like thee. Neither is there any God besides thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem to be his own people, to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness by driving out nations from before thy people whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. For thy people Israel didst thou make thine own people forever, and thou, Lord, became their God. See, the scripture is clear. The scripture is crystal clear. Blessed are the ones that have ears to hear and eyes to see. See, we'll be accused of trying to make the scriptures say what we wanted to say and trying to maneuver this and maneuver that, but the scriptures are clear. Only thing we have to do is sit here and read them. Don't even have to expound. Only thing we aspire for is clarity, but he said, for thy people of Israel did thou make thine own people forever. And thou, Lord, becamest their God. Therefore now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house be established forever and do as thou hast said. Let it even be established that thy name may be magnified forever, saying the Lord of hosts is the God of Israel, even a God to Israel, and let the house of David thy servant be established before thee. For thou, O my God, hast told thy servant that thou will build him in house. Therefore thy servant have found in his heart to pray before thee. Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken and shall he not make it good? And now, Lord, thou art God and has promised this goodness unto thy servant. Now, therefore, let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may be before thee forever. For thou blessed, O Lord, and it shall be blessed forever. Psalms 89 and 35. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever. See, this is what we just got to read. And his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven. Salah. Psalms 104, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. 
be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. See, we know this is a spiritual verse because we know God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, John 4 and 24. So when he say, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with, his, with praise, enter into the ark of God, meaning the heart of God. In order to enter in the heart of God, you got to be obeying God and doing his will. And if you're obeying God and doing his will, he say, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth and do it to all generations of the ones that is obeying him and doing his will. Ecclesiastes 24. I will yet make doctrine to shine as the morning and will send forth her light afar off, meaning that law of life, that doctrine of life, I'm going to send forth her light afar off, meaning that wisdom. I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, but for all them that seek wisdom. Didn't he just get through saying that? Right here in verse 5 of Psalms 100, he said, For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. Now he's telling us in verse 34 of Ecclesiastes 24, Behold, that I have not labored for myself, but for all them that seek wisdom. In other words, for all them that seek truth. See, if you just happen to stumble across this channel or any of the channels at the King James Bible University, whether it be North Carolina, Temecula Valley, the DMV, or just the regular King James, you, you did not stumble by here by accident. He say, behold, that I have not labored for myself only, but for all them that seek wisdom, meaning that seek truth. Because this is the only thing that we are serving on our spiritual platter. This the only meal that we have prepared is truth. Verse one, wisdom shall praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people. In the congregation of the most high shall she open her mouth and triumph before his power. I came out of the mouth of the most high and covered the earth as a cloud. I dwelt in high places, and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. I alone compass the circuit of heaven and walk in the bottom of the deep, in the waves of the sea, and in all the earth, and in every people and nation, I got a possession. With all these I saw rest, and in whose inheritance shall I abide? So the creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest, and said, Let thy dwelling be in Jacob, and thine inheritance in Israel. He created me from the beginning before the world, and I shall never fail. In the holy tabernacle I served before him, and so was I established in Zion. So he's saying a whole lot right here, and he's also speaking some spiritual things. So he's telling us, the spirit of Christ speaking, he said he created me from the beginning before the world, and I should never fail. This is speaking about the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, the spirit of Christ. 
But verse 10 is what I want you to look at. In the holy tabernacle, or you can say in the holy people, or you can say in the ones that's obedient in the sons of Jacob, the ones that's obedient of my chosen. In the holy tabernacle, I served before him. And so was I established in Zion. Was I established in the children of Israel? Was I established in the sons of Jacob? The ones that's obedient. It's a spiritual verse. Just giving you a little understanding as we go along the way. Because if you're obedient to your heavenly father, you will be considered that holy tabernacle. And if you consider that holy tabernacle, in verse 8, he said, So the creator of all things gave me a commandment. And he that made me cause my tabernacle to rest and said, let that dwell in. Let that dwell in be in Jacob. He's speaking about the spirit of Christ and down inheritance in Israel. This is Christ speaking. Bless all the ones who have eyes to see and ears to hear what we trying to show here. Let that dwelling be in the holy tabernacle. So was I established in Zion. And see, this is why Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, I beseech you. I beseech you, therefore. This is why Paul was saying this thing. He didn't say, you should. He say, I beseech you. Because Paul already knew if you do these things that Christ would dwell in you. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, a holy tabernacle. Hmm. Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the spirit of truth that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He say, I beseech you. So the question is, are you a holy tabernacle? See, He's telling us he's only commanded to dwell in a holy tabernacle. If your temple is not a holy tabernacle, 
He's not going to dwell there. And I got another precept that just dropped in my spirit. I didn't put it in his PowerPoint, but I'm going to have to bring it out for all of the ones that's in denial about verse 10 being a holy tabernacle, being you if you're obedient. I'm going to pull 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting at the 16th verse. It says, know ye not that ye are the temple of God? In other words, know ye not that ye are the holy tabernacle? And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? Meaning this same spirit of Christ that we're showing right here, that he had a commandment that he have to dwell in Jacob? Verse 17 to say, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. In other words, the tabernacle of God is holy, which tabernacle ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem it to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he take it the wise in their own craftiness. Blessed are the ones who have eyes to see and ears to hear. I'm going to continue to say this because somebody is getting this. I'm encouraged. Someone is seeing it, and I'm trying to make it crystal clear. I'm sitting here chewing on this word, not trying to rush it, because I want to make sure you get it. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you the reason why I want to make sure you get it. Because I got another precept that just dropped in my spirit and I'm going to have to share it with you. Second address, chapter 5 and verse 1. He says, nevertheless, as coming the tokens. Behold, remember, pay attention. The days shall come that they which dwell upon earth shall be taken in a great number. And the way of truth shall be hidden. And the land shall be barren of faith. So in other words, this truth is not going to be accessible to you. He say, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be barren of faith. He say, but only iniquity shall increase above that which now thou seest, or that thou hast heard long ago. So family, it's going to come a time. <clears throat> you're not going to be able to get this understanding. So make your calling and your election sure. Let's keep pushing. Likewise, in the beloved city, he gave me rest. And in Jerusalem was my power. In other words, in Jerusalem was my spirit. And I took root in an honorable people, even in a portion of the Lord's inheritance. So he's been crystal clear, family, on who this holy tabernacle is and how he was commanded to rest 
in Jacob. He's being crystal clear. Blessed are those that have eyes to see and ears to hear. Verse 23, all these things are the book of the covenant of the most high God, even the law which Moses commanded for an heritage unto the congregations of Jacob. Faint not to be strong in the Lord, that he may confirm you. Cleave unto him, for the Lord Almighty is God alone. And besides him, there is no other savior. See, family, he already showed and told us earlier that all the other gods of the people are idols. He told us it was clear. And now he said, for the Lord Almighty is God alone, and besides him there is no other Savior. In other words, he's telling you that an idol God cannot save you. So the question is, why are you worshiping an idol God? You have to answer that within yourself. Second Corinthians 5 and 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The same one that just got through telling us that the Most High gave him a commandment to rest in Jacob. He told us he only can dwell in a holy tabernacle. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. See, family, this is something that we cannot get past. I don't even care the ones that are sleeping in the grave right now. Guess what? They going to have to do the same too because he's going to wake them up to judge them. I got another precept that just dropped in my spirit. Proverbs 15 and 3. It says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. He's in every place. And then he's sitting there telling us, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. So we're not fooling anyone but ourselves. If we think we can maneuver in this life and hide and duck and dodge and do our dirt and don't think that the Most High is not taking inventory on our life, we can place in our mind that we are already saved and ready for heaven and we just live in a sinful life full of iniquity and we are only fooling ourselves. It's being recorded and he's taking inventory of our life. See, the word of God told us some of us going to scarcely make it into the kingdom. We just going, they got an old saying, you're going to make it in by just the, the skin of your teeth. I believe that's the saying. Going to just scarcely make it in. See, the scripture already tell us some going to make it in 30-fold, some 60, some even 100. 
but some gonna just barely make it into the kingdom. Some gonna be so close to making that 30-fold mark, but they just didn't quite make it. Some just gonna be so close, but it was something that they was holding on to. It was something that they was trying to cover it up. It was the proud, the prideful. It was something that they was too prideful to acknowledge, to go to God in prayer that kept them from making it into the kingdom. The spirit of pride. Too proud. kept them from inheriting the kingdom of God. It kept them from entering in because of disobedience. It kept them from entering in because instead of retaining God in their knowledge, in the righteousness of God, Scripture says they went about to establish their own righteousness and not the righteousness of God. Ecclesiastes 19 and 18, the fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him. And wisdom Obtained his love. See, because when he give us this wisdom, it's our responsibility to make the adjustments in our life, to follow after what he's feeding us. So he said, the fear of the Lord is the first step. The first step. You fear him enough to obey him. You love him enough to obey him. It's all about obeying him. Scripture tell us obedience is better than sacrifice. Somebody want to sacrifice their money. They want to sacrifice their time. They want to sacrifice their gifts to help the church and all these things. Obedience to his word is better than sacrifices. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him and wisdom attained his love. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. See, we said that earlier. The same Commandments that everyone will tell you is done away with. We can eat our pork because God showed Peter that it was clean. He cleaned it, and if it's clean, we good. See, they with our understanding. They with our understanding because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, so they got hold of something else. He said, the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him. In other words, we could say they that obey him because we know when we obey him, we are pleasing him. So they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. So in other words, shall receive the tree of life. He's telling us right here in scripture. And if the ones that got spiritual eyes and spiritual ears, it's a sister in our class. I'm not going to call her name, but she know exactly who I'm speaking of because she asked the question about this and she can see her answer right here in scripture. They that do things that please him shall 
receive the tree of immortality. In other words, shall receive the tree of life. And we already know with spiritual understanding what this tree of life is and, and what, it, what the meaning behind it is. But let's keep pushing. Revelation 22 and 14, bless our day that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of light. Here we go right there. I mean, it's, ooh, it's crystal clear now. And may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever love it and make it a lie. So what he's telling us, all those ones that has been preaching all these years that the law was done away with and we just only under grace and we don't have to do nothing but Jesus paid it all and we just believe that he died on the cross. That's what they'll tell you. He didn't die on the cross according to scripture, but that's what they'll tell you. And as long as we believe he paid it all, we good. He's telling us, whosoever love it and make it a lie, I, Yahweh, have sent mine angel to testify you these things in the churches, that I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So he's sitting there telling us, if you're not doing his will, you're not obeying his voice according to the spirit sitting there telling you what time it is. Let's keep going. Ecclesiastes 19 and 22. <clears throat> the knowledge of wickedness, meaning the knowledge of the world. The ones that did not like to retain God in their knowledge they want to latch hold to the knowledge of the world. So he said, the knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. Neither at any time the counsels of sinners prudence. <laughs> We're talking about two different things here. He said, there is a wickedness in the same an abomination. And there is a fool Wanting in wisdom. The most high sitting there telling us the ones that's latch hold to the knowledge of wickedness, or in other words, the knowledge of the world is a fool wanting in wisdom. He won't wisdom, but he's not following the instructions of the most high. Verse 24, he's saying, He that have small understanding and fear of God is better than one that have much wisdom and transgress it, the law of the most high. So we know what he told us in his word, he that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. And we know that everybody is not on the same level as retaining his knowledge and that's okay. Some people have a greater hunger and thirst. Then you have some that might just don't have the time to really put into seeking God out, but they still have a hunger and thirst. So he's going to feed us according to his will. Some going to get a little bit of knowledge, some going to get a whole lot of knowledge, some going to get in between, but whatever level of knowledge he blesses us with, uh, wisdom and understanding, it's all for our good. But he's telling us, he that have small understanding and fear of God is better than one that have much wisdom and transgress it, the law of the most high. So we can have all of this wisdom, but transgress it the law 
and still wound out, wound up not entering in his kingdom. Because we knew better. We was given this wisdom. But no, we want to try to twist it up. We want to try to fleece the flock. We want to try to make monetary gain out of his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He's telling us, family, blessed are the ones who have eyes to see and ears to hear. Hebrews 10 and 26, for if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. See, family, I'm just going to be clear with you. I'm just a vessel. This word applies to me just as much as it applies to you. With the level of knowledge that he has blessed me with over the years, I don't have no excuse when I have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Because if I sin willfully, after I have received the knowledge of truth, there remain no more sacrifices for sin. See, we have to make this thing personal. We have to make this thing personal with everything that he has showed me thus far. He's telling us to whom much is given, much is required. Verse 30, for we know him that have said, vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, said the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. See, family, that second death is going to be a terrible time. <clears throat> it's something that you couldn't even imagine. I don't care how you try to paint the picture in your mind and try to just vision it. You couldn't wrap your head around what this second death is going to be like. The Bible said it's going to be full of torment, gnashing of teeth. And the people are going to be wanting to die and can't die. The deaf angel going to flee from them. They're going to be wanting and begging to just be able to die so they can't feel this agony and pain anymore. And death is going to flee from them. This is the second death. Oh, you go to Revelations, it give you a, a visual, but it's something you couldn't wrap your mind around. The only point I'm trying to drive home, reason why I parked here, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Sometimes we just take him for granted. We just talk about him so loosely. 
a lot of times we only talk about him when we need something or when we going through it, when we feeling bad, when we sick, we got death in the family. But when everything is going good, we just like how he told us in the scripture. We did not like to retain God in our knowledge. So God just gave us up to a reprobated mind. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, which are called by my name, Israel, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. We know even this is a spiritual verse. He's talking about that holy tabernacle. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, talking about that holy tabernacle again, that my name may be there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to do all that, that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish my throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenant with David, thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, see, these things have been set before us. It's the plumb line. He's, he told us in uh, Amos chapter 9, I have set a plumb line in the midst of Israel. See, we can find this plumb line all through scripture when we know the word of truth, the knowledge of truth, the wisdom of God. He said, which I have set before you and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. In other words, he done told us all the other gods of the people are idols. So if you shall go and serve other idols, what he's saying, and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them. It's a spiritual verse talking about that holy tabernacle I'm just pausing for the effect because somebody is catching and connecting the dots in this house that holy tabernacle which I have sanctified for my name <clears throat> will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. See, we know this house is the same house he's talking about in 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. This house is the temple of God. It's talking about you! And he's telling you, if you choose to not obey him and do the things that he told you to do, he going to cast you out of his sight. And you're going to become a proverb and a byword among all the people. 
all nations. What he trying to get us to see. I've set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. Family, you got to choose what side of the plumb line you want to be on. He told us in verse 19, he said, but if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you. This thing is already set up. It ain't no changing it. The only one can change it is whatever side you choose to be on. You have that power in your hands to rightly divide the word of truth and make your decision. But he already told in his word, told us in his word to make our calling and election sure. And Paul went as far as enough to say, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice. See, we know this, this land and this house and all these things that he's talking about where he said his name at, all of these things that he's telling us are spiritual things. And hopefully... You got the understanding on what's going on. Verse 21, in this house, in other words, in this holy tabernacle, which is high, in other words, in this people, which is high, because I set it up that way, if they obey me, shall be an astonishment to everyone that pass it by it. So that he shall say, why have the Lord done this unto this land and unto this house, meaning unto this people? Mm. And it shall be answered because they forsook the Lord God. The Lord Yahweh of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, meaning the land of bondage. How he brought them out of the land of bondage? By the spirit of truth, by the word of truth, by the doctrine of life, by the commandments of life, because the word come to bring you life. This is how he brought you out of the spirit of dot, or the or land of bondage. Because see, even this land of Egypt is speaking spiritual things. And lay hold on other gods and worship them and serve them. Therefore have he brought all this evil upon them. See, this word will bring you out of darkness into his marvelous light. It'll bring you out of confusion to where you can have understanding. That's what this word come to do. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee 
if thou shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Prayer of Azaria 1 and 3. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers. Thy name is worthy to be praised and glorified forevermore. For thou art righteous in all the things that thou hast done to us. Yea, true are all thy works. Thy ways are right and all thy judgments truth. See, he already told us that he set a plumb line in the midst of us. So if we choose to disobey him, it was going to become an astonishment, meaning a spectacle amongst all the other people. We're going to be talked about. We're going to be a proverb and a byword and all of these things. Why? It's because we chose to disobey him. That's why he tell us here he said, thy ways are right and all that judgment's truth. It was a true judgment because he already set this before us. So whatever he set before us, he must perform it. In verse 5, he said, and all the things that thou has brought upon us and upon the holy City, meaning the holy tabernacle, the holy people, the holy city of our fathers, even Jerusalem, thou has executed true judgment. For according to truth in judgment, didst thou bring all these things upon us because of our sin. This is what happened. This is what's going on right now. Why? Because of our sins. For we have sinned and committed iniquity, departing from thee. In all things have we trespassed and not obeyed thy commandments, nor kept them, neither done as thou hast commanded us, that it might go well with us. This is why. Wherefore all that thou hast brought upon us and everything that thou hast done to us, thou hast done in true judgment. And thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies. In other words, people that don't have the law written on their hearts and, and placed in their hearts and written in their minds. The ones that don't abide by your law. The ones that don't abide by your knowledge. The ones that don't know you according to your law, stature, and judgment. Thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies most hateful forsakers of Yahweh. In other words, most hateful forsake, uh, most hateful forsakers of the most high God of Israel. See, 
they don't feel this way about their God. But the scripture clearly told us that the gods of all the other people are idols. But he said the most hateful forsakers of God, meaning the most high God of Israel, and to an unjust king and the most wicked in all the world. So the ones that do wicked things, the ones that is full of hate, The ones that don't have a problem taking another human being and hanging them by their necks on trees, cutting out their genitals and cutting them off, pulling their teeth out while they're still alive. A lot of these things we show right here in the scriptures in Maccabees cause the babies to be hung by their necks and the mama have to walk them around on their shoulders while the baby's being hung on their necks. The ones that didn't have a problem of cutting off the skin of the men that were still living and putting their flesh in a cauldron, meaning in a pan, and burning their skin while the person is looking at their own skin being burnt. It's right there in 2 Maccabees chapter 7. Those seven sons and that mother that died a terrible death because they did not want to disobey the most high God of Israel. Cut out their tongue, cut off the skin from their forehead and peel it back and put it inside the pots of the cauldrons and burn their flesh in front of them until they died. All this they did. King Atticus is his name. He said, and to an unjust king and the most wicked in all the world. And now we cannot open our mouths. We are become a shame and reproach to thy servants and to them that worship thee yet deliver us not up wholly for thy name's sake, neither disannul thou thy covenant, and cause not thy mercy to depart from us. For thy beloved Abraham's sake, for thy servant Isaac's sake, and for thy holy Israel's sake. See, we know that he changed Jacob's name to Israel. So, Another way we can read it is, and cause not thy mercy to depart from us for thy beloved Abraham's sake, for thy servant Isaac's sake, and for thy holy tabernacle's sake. Blessed are the ones who have eyes to see and ears to hear. To whom thou hast spoken and promised that thou wouldest multiply their seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand that lieth upon the seashore. Bless art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, and to be praised and exalted above all forever. 
and blessed is thy glorious and holy name and to be praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thine holy glory and to be praised and glorified above all forever, meaning in that holy tabernacle. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and sittest upon the cherubims, and to be praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom, and to be praised and glorified above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, and above all to be praised and glorified forever. <clears throat> oh, all ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye heavens, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye angels of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye waters that be above the heaven, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O oh, all ye powers of the Lord, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. And this is still the prayer of Azaria. I see on this slide, I still have Second Address, chapter 4, take all mistakes for love. Verse 40, ye sun and moon, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye stars of heaven, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O, sh o every shower and dew, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O all ye winds, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye fire and heat, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Now I want you to focus on verse 45 for a minute because we know that in this world, or even I can say in this day and time, or I can even take it a little farther and say, in the knowledge of this world, not the knowledge of God, but the knowledge of this world, we have four seasons. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. That's the knowledge of the world. But according to the knowledge of our God, it's only two seasons, winter and summer. This is why a lot of times in the winter it's still hot. And you're trying to figure out it's so hot and it's November or December or vice versa. April and sometimes even in March, it's so cold. The reason is because in the knowledge of God, in the knowledge of Yahweh, it's only two seasons, winter and summer. But Daniel already told us that man was going to change times and seasons he was going to do these things and he have done these things and now the knowledge of the world you have four seasons winter spring summer and fall 
But just like we already saw earlier, Paul told us they did not like to retain knowledge, or they did not want to retain God in their knowledge. So God gave them up to a reprobated mind. So in other words, you'll be calling right, wrong, and wrong, right. I just wanted to park here for a minute because according to the knowledge of God, Yahweh, according to scripture, is only two seasons. Winter and summer, and that's it. See, a lot of people was stretching their heads and, and even some people was commenting, trying to criticize Elder Johnson for the date that the Passover was done. And criticizing and thinking that according to that date that things was way off. But according to the scripture, winter and summer is the only two seasons. So let's keep pushing. Oh, ye winter and summer, Bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye dews in storms of snow, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye nights and days, bless ye the Lord. Bless and exalt him above all forever. Let me park right there again. I have to park right here again. Because whenever I see a separation in scripture, I always like to point out the separation. So just as we just showed in verse 45 with the two seasons, there again, Daniel said man was going to change times and seasons, laws and times and dates and all these things. According to the knowledge of the world, the new day starts at midnight, 12 a.m. And it goes all the way around to 11 59 p.m. And then at midnight, a new day begins according to the knowledge of the world. But according to the knowledge of God, Yahweh is his name. Genesis 1 and 5 says, and God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Evening and morning were the first day. So we know according to scripture, 6 p.m. all the way around to 6 p.m. the next day is a full day according to scripture. In the evening, in the morning is the first day. And if you understood the layout in scripture, 
you will understand the scripture that's dealing with Yahweh Shai and that spirit being resurrected back up. You would understand it because all the churches will tell you that he died on a Friday and he got up on a Sunday morning, what they'll tell you. And if you do the math, it's not adding up. The three days and the three nights is not adding up. The reason why it's not adding up because according to the scripture, according to the knowledge of God, Yahweh, they're going by the days and the times all wrong. See, we at King James Bible University, we know what day it was. We know what day it was when he died. And we know what day that that spirit that was in him rose back up again. We know it. Because we're using the knowledge of God to determine these things. So, O oh, ye nights and days, bless ye the Lord. Bless and exalt him above all forever. O oh, ye light and darkness, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O oh, ye ice and cold, Bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye frost and snow, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye lightnings and clouds, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O let the earth bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye mountains and little hills, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye things that grow in the earth, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye mountains, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye seeds and rivers, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye whales and all that move in the waters, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O all ye fowls of the air, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. <clears throat> o oh, all ye beasts and cattle, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O oh, ye children of men, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O oh, Israel, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye priests of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. What he's saying is, O ye holy tabernacle. That's what he's saying. Verse 65, O ye holy 
and humble men of heart. Bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O Ananias, Azarius, and Mishael, and some of you may know him as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over in Daniel. This is who they are. Go check it. Daniel chapter 1. Bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. For he have delivered us from hell and saved us from the hand of death and delivered us out of the midst of the furnace and burning flame. Even out of the midst of the fire have he delivered us. See, family, even this is a spiritual verse. Blessed are the ones who have eyes to hear, I mean eyes to see and ears to hear. Because this is a spiritual verse. He's telling you about the second death. He's telling you Blessed are the ones that escape the second death. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord because he is gracious for his, for his mercy endured forever. Oh, all ye that worship the Lord, bless the God of gods. Praise him and give thank and give him thanks for his mercy endured forever. So, family, I just wanted to encourage you. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I want to edify you and give you strength. to worship him in the beauty of holiness. Because if we do that, he already showed us that he gave a commandment to Christ to dwell in Jacob, to rest in this holy tabernacle. It's clear. Blessed are the ones who have eyes to see and ears to hear. So I just want to thank everyone for tuning in and coming just to feast upon the word of God. Just want to invite you to have a couple of new channels that came on board not long ago. Uh, we have Elder Smith with Temecula Valley, King James Bible University, Elder Pittman with the DMV, King James Bible University. And of course, we have Elder T with North Carolina, King James Bible University. And of course, Elder Johnson and myself. But just want you to get this family. I know there are others out there that's teaching the truth. I don't know their names, but I know they're there according to the scripture. I know they're out there. And our only goal is that you see the truth, you hear his voice, you turn and start doing the works that's meet for repentance. And you can have a right to the tree of life. This is my only goal. It's chosen to work in this field to till the ground and be a servant 
and this is what you have to do. So I'm going to say a shalom to everyone until we meet again. Have a wonderful Sabbath. And I'm going to say a shalom until we meet again. Shalom.